Reggie here, and I want to welcome you to another one of my videos. In this video, we're going to take a look at some minor keys, baby keys, if you will, that you might want to think about picking up and adding to your collection. In the current environment, a lot of folks are not looking to spend hundreds to thousands of dollars to enhance their collection. And so I wanted to put this video together to identify a couple of minor keys that you might want to pick up and you can spend a lot less money. With that said, stay tuned for the video. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of examples. And the first one is right here on screen. It is X-Force issue number two. This book is the second appearance of Deadpool. It's also the first appearance of some other places and people. Uh, but this book is all about Deadpool. And this is a great alternative if you are not able to get a copy of New Mutants 98, his first appearance. That book at a 9.8 will set you back around $1,500 and a 1 1.5 back in 2016, because I think that was the last time it was sold at that lower grade, will also set you back $100. But what can you get? What can you get when you're looking at X-Force issue number two? With this book, you can actually land a 9.8. And we're actually going to back up here to look at that real quick. The 9.8 has an FMV of $75. There are 5,100 universal copies of this book out there. 2,400 of them are a 9.8. And as I mentioned, the FMV for the 9.8 is $75, just 75 bucks for this one. And you can see where this book historically has been, right? If you back up all the way to 2021, this book was going for $160. And it is tapered off and basically maintained a level of around, you know, less than a hundred bucks. But again, FMV for this book is 75 bucks. The 30 day average is $72. And the most recent prices for this book in October, this month is 66, 61, 64, and somebody paid 70. They may have paid a little too much. You back up 80 bucks. Somebody paid $66 is what this book is going for now. Not a bad book to pick up. Deadpool's popularity, I think, is to some degree only increasing, right? He has a new movie that's eventually going to come out. If you believe the rumors, everybody and their mother is going to be in this movie, including Taylor Swift and Hugh Jackman and just about everybody else. But it, it is the movie franchise is strong. Deadpool is a popular character with the the populace, but it's also he's also a popular character with comic book fans as well. This again is a great alternative. Uh, to being able to get New Mutants 98. If you can get that book, I say pull the trigger on that. But this is about the baby keys and X-Force issue number two, I do believe qualifies as just that. This next book is an awesome book. It is Batman issue number 609. And it is the first appearance of Thomas Elliot, who is later revealed to be Hush. If you have not read this story arc, the Hush story arc, I encourage you to check it out. It is incredible. I think it is incredibly well done. And we get our first look at Thomas Elliot in this book right here. Now, why is this book potentially a baby key? It's a baby key because there is a rumor out there right now that Hush is going to be one of the villains in the Batman part two. This is unconfirmed, but the rumor is Clayface and also Hush. If it proves to be true, this could be an awesome book to have. If it proves to be untrue, Hush is, I do believe, one of the more popular DC story arcs out there of the modern age. And so they've reprinted the Hush story arc several times, and it's highly unlikely that they're going to stop printing it because it proves to be popular because it is an awesome story arc. Hence me identifying this as a baby key. Fingers crossed that Hush does appear in the upcoming The Batman. Uh, with that said, though, with this book. There are 1,500 copies out there, Universal Blue Label, 2,000 copies overall. With this book, I would try to go for the 9.8. I, I would try to go for the 9.8. There are 956 of them on the census. 
the FMV for this book at a 9.8 is $160. And when we drill into this, we're going to be able to see some additional information here. You see, again, the FMV, 160, the 30-day average, 149. And um, the most recent sale, 170. The sale before that, 143. The one before that, 160. The one before that, 154. There may be a little bit of a continued uptick in this book because people may be buying into the rumor that Thomas Elliott, a.k.a. Hush, is going to appear in the movie. Again, this is not a bad time to get in on this book because it's an awesome book. Ideally, you would have wanted to pick this one up uh, before the rumor started to circulate, but you're only talking about a, a small amount of difference right now, right? Uh, back in September, the book was going for 145, 155, uh, and then you started to see a little bit of an uptick as we got into the early part of October at 175, 155, 154, et cetera, et cetera. So not a terrible book. Uh, I, again, would go for the 9.8, but let's say that you don't necessarily buy into the whole rumor mill, but you still want to get in on this book. The 9.6 is not a bad way to go either. There are 354 of them out there on the census. It has a FMV of $100 at a 9.6. The 30-day uh, average for this book is 92. And the most recent sale this month, 79. So if you decide to save yourself a couple of bucks, going with the 9.6 might also make sense. All right, so let's go ahead and look at another example. And this next one is also associated with I think a, a popular character, definitely more popular, I think, than Hush. It is Venom. And this book is Amazing Spider-Man issue number 316. This is the third appearance of Venom. It is also the first full body, if you will, cover featuring Venom. His head appeared on the cover of Amazing Spider-Man 315, but here we see his whole body on the cover, and, and, and it's for the first time. Again, hence me saying that this is a baby key. If you can pick up Amazing Spider-Man issue number 300, I say go for it, right? That's his first full appearance, but 316, in my mind, is a nice baby key to have for, for arguably one of the more popular modern villains in Marvel. And, and he has movies out there. His popularity uh, to some degree or another, like Deadpool, I think is still continuing to grow. And it, it's an awesome cover. It, it is an awesome cover from a legendary artist, Todd McFarlane. Uh, the book was released in June of 1989. When you look down here at the data, there are 9,100 copies of this book out there, uh, almost 11,000 total overall. Where would I go for this book? The 9.8 would be great. The 9.8 would be a great place to go, uh, but it, it's it's a lot of money. It's $650 at, at the FMV. So potentially the 9.6, potentially the 9.6 is the right way to go. And you can see what's happened with this book. What was that? Back in, what month was that? Back in April of 21, this book was going for $723. I remember seeing it being offered up uh, at a 9.8 for a lot more than that, which is which is really crazy. Uh, but right now, when you look at it, the most recent sale, $210, $210 for the 9.6, the 30 day average, 253. Uh, the sales before that, uh, this one right here that says it was 249, it was a best offer. It ended up going for 215. The one before that, uh, on October 10th, offered up for 225, ended up going for 199. So again, not a terrible price. And this one is going for, for below its fair market value right now and also for less than its 30-day average. Again, those last few sales, 210, 215, 199, not a bad way to go at all to pick up a baby key. So there you have it. Three awesome books, I think, in Amazing Spider-Man issue 316, Batman 609, and X-Force issue number two, all great books in my mind. If you enjoyed this video, I want to encourage you to go ahead and give the video a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, I want to invite you to do that. And if you want to reach out to me, feel free to do that on Instagram at Reggie Collects. Take care. This thing on. Mic check. I just want to make sure y'all can hear me clearly. Yeah. 
should you practice art or should art be your practice? I had a question, so I asked it. Not to anyone specifically, but to my inner God, you know? The one that's gonna be a master. The one that's more than a rapper. The one that's an educator. The one that seeks enlightenment. He travels with concepts. He's got the mindset expansive. He understands that it's time combined with travel and concepts. Makes his mind convex. Sort of like when you look at a brain scan. Straight off meditation, we was concaving until we had that eternal dialogue that created our dialect. Now we're in distinct rooms of pure souls, having them conversations, synergy and combination.